All right, we're going to go back to Washington. Uh, Justin Trudeau is attending the NATO summit, but he's also delivering a keynote speech on meeting the challenges of climate change. Let's listen in here to the Prime Minister. Before I continue, I also want to recognize uh, General Wayne Eyre, who is joining us here today at NATO and is attending his final NATO summit before retiring later this month. General, thank you for your many years of outstanding service, not just to Canada, but to NATO and to the world. Canada and NATO have long recognized an indisputable fact. Climate change is not only an existential environmental threat, but one of the defining security issues of our time. Le Canada et l'OTAN savent depuis longtemps Canada has been with NATO for a long time, and climate change is not only an environmental threat, but it's the greatest challenge, safety challenge of our generation. Frequent and intense natural disasters threaten security infrastructure like ports and military bases that keep our alliance safe. A warming Arctic is opening up a new arena of competition that our adversaries are eager to exploit, and climate-induced floods famines and droughts exacerbate inequality, fuel conflict, and drive displacement across the globe, all of which disproportionately harm marginalized and vulnerable populations. Overall, climate change risks creating a less stable, less prosperous, and less secure world. That is why we acted. Back home, our government has shown global leadership in addressing the climate crisis. We've placed a price on pollution that simultaneously reduces our emissions and puts more money in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadians. We launched Canada's first national adaptation strategy to build stronger and more resilient communities. We became the first major oil-producing nation to introduce a cap on emissions from the oil and gas sector. And we're creating hundreds of thousands of good-paying, sustainable jobs from coast to coast to coast with our $160 billion investment in our net zero economic plan and green industrial strategy, showing every step of the way that good climate policy is good economic policy. What gathers us here today is that it is also good security policy. Addressing a global problem like climate change requires a global response. A global response which we've been coordinating in close partnership with our 31 fellow member states in NATO. Our government has been a strong advocate for ensuring that climate change is an integral part of NATO's agenda and that together we act to make it a reality. Notre gouvernement a toujours insisté Our pour government has always insisted that fighting climate change is part of the NATO ensemble. program, so we'll work together. In 2021, the Alliance published the NATO Climate Change and Security Action Plan, a plan which recognized the risks that climate change poses to NATO and pledged to take action to address those challenges. In 2022 and 23, Canada co-led a climate change working group with Denmark and Norway to identify and establish NATO's climate research priorities. And we spearheaded the NATO Climate Change and Security Center of Excellence, which we were proud to launch last year. It will be housed in downtown Montreal. This center serves as a critical research platform to ensure that NATO allies and partners are equipped with the information they need to succeed in a climate-changed world, to plan for and adapt to and mitigate the security risks and impacts caused by climate change, and to forge strong partnerships with organizations like the Munich Security Conference and the CDA Institute that are committed to addressing the security challenges posed by the climate crisis. So today, I'm excited to celebrate with you all the important milestone for the Center. Just a few weeks ago, the Alliance accredited it as an official NATO Center of Excellence, Canada's first.
This important step was many months in the making and was only made possible by the strong support of the 11 sponsoring nations, 11 NATO allies who, like us, see the value of standing up a world-class, security-focused climate research body. We're looking forward to seeing what the Center will accomplish, and we expect to see many more nations join in this work in the coming years. This Center of Excellence, along with our leadership of the multinational NATO-led battle group in Latvia, our continued efforts to train Ukrainian military personnel through Operation Unifier, and our new defense policy vision, which invests $73 billion in defense over the next two decades, all demonstrate Canada's unwavering resolve to support the alliance. A resolve that continues to grow stronger. When we took office, Canada was spending less than 1% of its GDP on defense every year. But we vowed to change that right away. And we followed through on our word. We're investing more in our troops, in our capacity, and in our capabilities, all while continuing to provide assistance to our allies resisting Russian aggression. NATO is the strongest military alliance in the world. And to keep it that way, we must continue to step up individually and collectively to strengthen both our alliance and the collective peace it represents and protects. Canada stands with our NATO allies. Canada will always defend the values of democracy, freedom, and the rule of law, as it is more important today than it has ever has been. My friends, we must be clear-eyed about the current state of global affairs. The long peace after the Second World War is over. We're living in an increasingly dangerous, unstable, and complex world. Cyber warfare, resurgent authoritarian forces, expanding regional conflicts, and everywhere increasing impacts of climate change all represent growing threats to our collective security and our continued prosperity. This is the sobering reality we must all face. That's why Canada will continue to work closely with like-minded allies to tackle these challenges directly, to build a better world for all. We will grow our global partnerships, and we will always do what is needed to forge a stronger, more united NATO and to keep us all safe. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, so we're listening to Justin Trudeau. Uh, this was a climate change address, but it's part of the larger NATO summit that's going on. NATO is celebrating 75 years since its founding back in 1949. And as you heard the prime minister say, Canada was a founding member back then in the aftermath of the Second World War. Uh, a lot at stake, of course, NATO more relevant than ever, given the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The big problem, challenge, issue for Canada is military spending. Canada does not spend what we are supposed to, what we have committed to spend. In fact, we're tens of billions of dollars away from that target. We are way in the back of NATO countries. There are 32 of them. We rank at the bottom, along with countries like Luxembourg and Belgium and Slovenia, in terms of how much we are spending in terms of our GDP. It's not a good look for Canada, and it is, well, frankly, embarrassing to a certain extent.